Hey, VPN viewers, I'm Adam Carolla. This card has nothing written on it. Watch, I'm gonna prove it. We're doing a special What Can Adam Complain About next Wednesday. Again, nothing on the card. To submit topics, post a video response to this video on youtube.com slash Adam Carolla. That's C-A-R-O-L-L-A, ass wipes. And don't forget to subscribe to uh, Moi's show. Then tune in live on youtube.com slash VPN this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific to see it. Again, nothing on this card. From fabulous Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, home of the stars, the magic factory where dreams come true, culture capital of the world, jewel of the Pacific, it's the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, yeah. yeah get it on. Got to get it on, no choice. We, get, we just making sure that there's just enough mic cord to get the goddamn mic to the chair, but no, not enough to actually lift it. What? I'm in the middle. Oh, oh. Well, even I'm, I'm pissed on behalf of Allison. Thank you. Yes, I'm thinking about pulling a tampon out and throwing it at. There, be mad. At who? It, that's the whole Ooh, point. It's like who, whoever <laughs> that, catches it gets their period next. That's right. I love that. Oh, that'd make a wonderful rom-com. Oh, and thank you so much for my mangria. Hey, Elliot Gould is going to be here tonight. <laughs> Elliot Gould is here tonight. We'll bring him out in a couple of few. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Allison Rosen Hello. over there. That is Bald Brian over there. <laughs> And uh, I think we have some uh, audience questions, and I think what we'll do is we'll uh, take a few of those, and then we'll bring Mr. Gould out here. So, uh, Brian, you collected them. Now, yeah. Brian, we never discuss this in advance, yes? We don't discuss anything in advance. <laughs> okay, good. Let alone the listener questions. Okay. I think that's clear from us trying to get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> First question is from uh, Jay Black of Marlton, New Jersey. Where is Jay Black? Jay Black. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Now, do we care, you know, you're from New Jersey, right? And, and how long you been out here? Uh, this is uh, 37 hours at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And so you're going back to New Jersey? Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, nothing <laughs> personal, but it's, you know, yeah, we're, no, we're, 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 we're lousy with white guys with, you know, bad dialects. Yeah, so totally understand. We're that. doing good here. I'm with we got, you. We got like, I got like eight of you at home. <laughs> Three in the car. <laughs> Keep one under the seat, the driver's side, just to play it safe in case I run out of you. Sure. So, yeah. Well, wait. When are you heading back then? Uh, well, I, I'm uh, I, I'm on a trip, but I'll be back by Sunday. All right. So when the mushrooms wear off, that's when you return. Huh? <laughs> yes. Well, what are you doing? I want to know. I want to know about this trip. I'm, I'm curious. A, I'm a stand-up comic. Oh. Uh, uh, here I was out doing a Kevin Nealon show over uh -huh. at the Laugh Factory. Uh huh. So, mm -hmm. Big fan of yours, oh, thank of course, you. Kevin Nealon. Now uh, listen, do you have like let's say a super racist five minutes you could yeah. do? Well, but it's gotta be super racist, yeah. you know. I, no, I was at the Laugh Factory and they require that. Okay, so. all right. All right, so you're here, you're doing comedy, you're with yeah. Kevin Nealon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, have uh, any of you have, have, have you ever seen Kevin Nealon try to defend Bubbles the Elephant uh, uh, on your show. It's some of the yeah, greatest it's footage. Yeah, it's the greatest thing. And it, let me just uh, say, can oh. I just say this? As a stand-up comic, you, I, I know you don't like getting your ass kissed. You don't like it. I know. Bob no, but Ryan, I'll turn around just so Allison, you don't miss. <laughs> Allison Rosen, I just got to say, and well, I, I expect you to have an ass to kiss, Adam. In all honesty, yeah. there's nothing back there. Sorry. Uh, but the point I'm trying to say is, Jimmy Kimmel wore it off. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you, I hang out with comics all day long. I listen to your podcast. You're on a different level. We were just talking about it. Oh, I love that. Your I brain that. Thank you. works much quicker than any brain should. Oh, that's and why think, I'm already bored. Yeah, we're already worried. Other people would be absorbing this. I'm, I'm, I'm a that, million miles away, bored that, off my ass. That you're a robot, but uh, it's, you're you. phenomenal. You we love you. From, great. Um, yes. It's a blessing and a curse. And, well, listen, it, when a comedian, even if you'll never hear his name ever again, <laughs> compliments you, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Yes. Yes. All right, because we're all part of a, uh, an elite fraternity where uh, anyone can try something called right. an open mic. Right, all exactly. Right. We're all pledging. All right, but Jay, what, what was your question? I'm sorry. 
Uh, d- does Bald Brian read it, or do you want me to just answer? Oh, uh, I don't oh, know. I don't ahead. know how it works. All if right, you remember, if you, go ahead. If you had the choice for Sonny, because I'm a father of a son that's the same age just uh-huh. about, uh-huh. he could be gay, mm-hmm. or he could be straight with a super weird fetish, mm-hmm. like uh, furry, like uh-huh. uh, getting pooped on, uh-huh. uh, you know, anything. When's it get weird? Yeah. <laughs> so far, yeah, that's the only a- problem I see with this is getting the poop out of the fur. That's, <laughs> you don't combine those two fetishes. That's a good it's point. either that's furry or you go with poop. You don't yeah. go furry and poop. Right. That's a wire brush and lacquer thinner, <laughs> and there's not, uh, uh, not, the, not a pressure sprayer out. with yeah. enough PSI to get the poo yeah. out of that furry <laughs> outfit. Um, so you don't combine those fetishes? No, no, no. But no. He, what? But your gay? Choice? Well, gay or super weird? Like, hey, it's Thanksgiving dinner. This is Molly. She dresses as Winnie the Pooh and pees yeah. on me. Which mm-hmm. is the one you'd prefer? Well, listen, I, you know, the whole gay thing. I, I, first off, you can't be uptight and live in Hollywood about gay. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think. I can say that, and I speak for most parents, that you hope your kids aren't gay just because you don't want them to deal with the trials and tribulations. Right. Like, I, that's why I was relieved when my son was born, I found out he wasn't black, you know? <laughs> it was like, woo! Sure. Because it yeah. can be tough out there, right. you know what I mean? Or Puerto Rican, or something like that. <laughs> Asian, I was a little disappointed. I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> damn. But the point is, is gay, it's tough. Right? right? I mean, mm-hmm. eh, maybe if you live within a three mile radius of where we're sitting right now, it's cool. Right. You know, you're Priscilla, queen of the desert if you're living <laughs> out here. But as soon as you go back to uh, New Jersey, sure, yeah, you, you got a uh, fire extinguisher uh, filled with uh, drunk frat boy urine waiting for your <laughs> ass out, out front of the bar. So um, that's tough. But the weird fetish. Now, here's the thing about the weird fetish. I would never know about the weird fetish. You know what I mean? Right. It's not like he'd be over for Thanksgiving. Hey, Dad, guess who I shat on uh, earlier today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm still dilated, by the way. I do this thing with... <laughs> I shit on guys in uh, wearing um, a gerbil outfits. It's awesome, man. Right. See, he would never tell me that, just like your mom has no idea how often you beat off, and it's a lot. Right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They have no idea what you're into. You don't know what your dad's into. Right. That's my point. It's but very, you would know if your dad was sucking dick, right? I, well, I would imagine. Well, not, I mean, not as a hobby, right. but I mean full time. We're, <laughs> we're, we're not talking about a part time gig here. We're talking full time, cock chugging, 24 uh, 7, seven days a week, 365. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? So I'm saying I'll go with the weird fetish because it saves him whatever societal stigmas have about being gay, and he'll never tell me. You know what I mean? Because gotcha. he'll introduce me to his fiance. He won't tell me about all the weird swinging shit he's into and all the fecal stuff and all that. So I'll never know. I'll go to my grave not knowing what a, a sexual ghoulish, uh, not Elliot ghoulish, but the sexually <laughs> ghoulish stuff my son is into. Can I just By the way, he threw up three times at school today and uh, was sent home. It's awesome. <laughs> Sick well, or eating disorder? Uh, well, according to this guy, could have got some bad semen. Right. Or if he threw up and got an erection, he could have problems. Uh, yeah. Uh, p- c- counterpoint. To oh, that. I know. Right, you just give a <laughs> counterpoint. Just, I just want to get your the opinion. the Jane Addams show. I'm just a counterpoint to this. If he were gay, right. sex becomes easier for him. Yeah. In his life. I'm just saying it's easier to go to a gay bar and suck off a dude. Right. Than to find color. a woman who's going to wear Captain Hook outfit. I'm Listen, just throwing I'm, that out there as a question. I've, Next caller. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've read the Dixie Riddle Cups. I understand it's right. easier to go right. to a bar and suck off a dude right. than it is to do that. But listen, it's easier to do a push-up in outer space than it is on Earth. Now, how do you want it for your kid? <laughs> Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> At least they say it's easier. I've never really tested that out. But you know what I mean? A certain amount of resistance is a good thing in life. You should have to work a little to get laid. Imagine if guys had to put no effort into nailing hot chicks. I think some of us have met guys like that. They're horrible people. Yeah, but you're secretly attracted to it. Of course. But they're cultivating a no effort approach to getting in your panties, which, which takes a lot of effort. That's what you don't know. Oh, I their hair, it took them an hour and a half to get their hair to look fucked up. 
Do you mean they care? So you're saying they care about not caring? I'm saying when guys really don't care, like if you just said this is going to be super easy to get laid, you really don't have to care, we might not even get dressed. You know what I mean? Right. We'd all be 400 pounds. We'd all be driving a, 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 a Toyota a Tercels with like a Bondo all over them and maybe a swastika or something. You that, know what I mean? We'd put zero effort into anything. That's, why, he, that's why Hugh Hefner exists in his pajamas. Right. He's got his no pajamas. Effort. Yeah. I'd be chewing tobacco and doing like shots of peppermint schnapps and telling you you didn't look that good. And it'd just be zero effort. I just need to point something out. Cars don't come with swastikas on them. It's not like you have to put effort oh, yeah, into right. buffing that out. That's extra. That's extra work. You're right. I wouldn't do that because it'd be what we call a tell. It's a tell. <laughs> all right. What do we have? What's next? Next one's from uh, oh, all over the place. Nick Harvey from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Where's Nick? Nick Harvey? Yeah. From, all the way from Illinois. Ace man. I love your grandfather's work on that farmer commercial um, for the Super Bowl. Almost brought a tear to my eye. He has no idea what I'm talking I about. No idea what you're talking That's about. good. Well, All get right. it on to you and yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. All right. Yeah. How is it? Who? Let me ask you this. How do you have the same name as a famous person, or at least the same last name as a famous person, and you, how, how old are you? I'm 28. 28. So you, you, do you know the name Paul Harvey? Who's Paul Harvey? Yeah. All right, but your last name isn't Harvey. Your last name is Mud. This guy? Okay. This is, no. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Listen, I'm not a Paul Harvey historian. I just know there's a guy who's famous enough that they would use his voice on a Super Bowl ad about farming. And when they said, that's Paul Harvey, no one went, who? Paul who? Elliot Gould knows who Paul Harvey is. Elliot, you know, yell. Right He's right behind oh, you. Oh, shit. There he is. Oh, he doesn't know. Oh, don't. No, you're just hanging me out in the wind, Elliot. That's what you do. See, this is your brand of humor. You know who Paul Harvey is. You know who Paul. Hold on, Mike. Come here, the, young, the world's uh, oldest young man. Do you set microphone? Do you know who Paul Harvey is? I do. Why do you know? Just other than you know a bunch of shit that no one else yeah, wants I'm to the, know. I'm the world's oldest 35 year old. Uh, okay. Show hands, Paul Harvey. Uh, Ass third, kissers. Third of the room. All right, all right. Now, okay, everyone's shitting on my point here. <laughs> Ellie you Gould, you're about? right in Paul's wheelhouse. It's impossible for you. Talking to that mic, right? Well, let's bring Elliot Gould up on stage if we could. <laughs> Well, you can uh, you can have yeah, a seat. Sit. You don't. Yes, you may you may sit. You can squat. I'll stand with you. You can stand. Like, <laughs> the name Paul Harvey. Well, there, uh, uh, there was some friend. guy who sounded funny to me on the radio. Yes, Paul Harvey. thank you. But thank I, you. I, I have to be uh, honest. I, I don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> <laughs> but. You remember him going, this is Paul Harvey, good day? And now you right. know the rest of the story. Right, there's a guy who never gets laid, who understands things. All right. Uh, he's a radio. Okay. The, the, now, who else has got some story? Right, well, here's my point. I had a point. It's a little less. It's, it's been rounded over. But I can still penetrate this guy's flesh if I get a running start. I mean, with my point. You know what I'm saying? You're the only one here who has the last name of Harvey. So you're not in the club of dodos who don't know who Paul Harvey is because you share the same last name, thus you should know. Like when there's a song that has your name in it, other folks your age may not know the song, but you should know the song. If there was a song called um, I Love Me Some Elliot Gould. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Jim no, Blossom's I'm, I'm saying, Mike Frona. Harvey was an invisible rabbit. Oh, yeah, from uh, that movie with Harvey. Chase. Yeah, yeah, all right. I know that. I've heard that. All right. So, I still don't know who Paul Harvey is, though. All right, you're going to go home. You're going to Google <laughs> Paul Harvey. This. You're going to yes. masturbate, and then, <laughs> okay. then you're going to apologize to me. Okay. You understand? Sure. All right. Puff, can we have a tape of Paul Harvey? Do we have the sound of him? Anything? <laughs> well, well, he was in a Super Bowl commercial. Look, I'll tell you how famous he is. He was in a Super Bowl commercial, and he's been dead for six years. That's famous. Who, else, who amongst us has starred in a Super Bowl ad? Who here is dead? Now imagine the chances of being dead and starring in a Super Bowl spot. 
I it's, can imagine. It's not probable. <laughs> if your agent is good, I think maybe. Oh, no, I don't think so. No, okay. All right, so sorry, the question, question was okay. what? Um, Ellie, you can stand, you can sit down if you like. Okay. I, feel, I, feel, I feel bad, I may sit down myself. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so um, the perfect day starting with a, the order of shit and then shower. How could you complain about flushable wipes? When no, your oh. day doesn't start exactly like that. We're doing uh, what can I complain about all of a sudden? I can complain <laughs> about that. I, it's hard to complain about the flushable wipes, and uh, I've, uh, I've, I've stumbled onto these things in recent months and have grown, grown fond of them. Um, it's like a secret club that other people who shit a lot have known about for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's Because I se- also recently discovered them. There's a secret handshake, you know, the wipe shake. It's, yeah. more, it's more of a fist bump. Yeah, but the, <laughs> but the problem with uh, these, and uh, as I've joked about many times, is um, they come in the same packet that the Pine Sol sink wipes come in. And uh, many years ago, a uh, young Jimmy Kimmel made the mistake of using the one that was encrusted with uh, uh, pine saw and, uh, you know, uh, alcohol and chlorine and things like that in the wrong spot. They they need to be clearly marked, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, it gets the job done. If you think about it, but we just don't need those things uh, sitting around on top of the sink. Or if you're going to take them, you got you to put them away yeah. if you're using the ones that are clean in the sink. No, no Paul Harvey yet, huh? No one, no one has <laughs> ever brought been on that the up. I since we started talking. Yeah. I haven't looked him up. And yet. Elliot Gould is fucking with me. He knows Paul Harvey well. I know who well. he is. He know, you, do you know Elliot Gould? I know him. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Ass wipe. All right, give the phone to somebody. Give the mic to somebody else. Let's do one more. And I should... Uh, Thank you. I should tell uh, everyone that uh, Elliot has a movie. It's a uh, romantic comedy called uh, Dwarfman in Love. Can you tell us about that, uh, Elliot? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was right. I said, we got Elliot Gould. I'm just going to sit back, relax, let him do the heavy lifting. <laughs> 90 minutes later, I'll blink my eyes and we'll be out of here. <laughs> Elliot, let's talk. Should we talk about you? I don't care. Okay. <laughs> What'd you do, just have a double cappuccino before you hopped up here? You gotta fucking, you gotta tone it down a little. This is an intimate room. You're not, you're not on Broadway, you understand? Lower the tone. Forget about the people on the balcony. There's no tree people out here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right. One more question. What do we got here? Next question is from Ben Rovner from Chicago. Is he close? There he is, uh, right in front here. Ben, right in front. Hey guys, Um, so question is, is there an age gap that's appropriate or inappropriate for dating? And does it change over time? Like when you're 40, can you go 15 years? When you're 30, can you go how many years? Uh, Are you 30? No, I'm 28. It's it's, it's weird, it it kinda depends. Here's what it depends on. Um, It depends on what the chick looks like. Like if she's like blonde and popping and her gum when she's chewing it and has never heard of Paul Harvey and stuff like that, it's going to be an issue. If she's got dark hair and she's got some cool rim glasses or something like that, then it's okay. You know, part of it is not just the actual age, it's how the person comes across. You know what I'm, you know what I'm so saying? So if they're 20 but they act like they're 28, it's okay, but if they're 20 and they act like they're 14, it's bad. Right, right, okay. that's right. You're okay. Trying. If you yeah. dress them up like Catholic schoolgirls and you put them up... So I should well, stop doing that, it's what well, you're saying. Well, don't, you know, like the like, huge lollipop she carries everywhere with her. How did you... Have you yeah. met her? So there's a couple of things. Also, we're weird because it'll go one way, not the other. If a guy's 66 and he's dating a 39-year-old, it's like, hey, good for him. If a uh, chick is 66 and dating a 39-year-old, there's a lot of, oh, that's weird. Yeah. What's going on? I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it's healthy, but it's weird, right? It's weird the other way, and it's fucked up because we die, I don't know, seven years before you guys die. So if a guy is married to a woman and the woman is 10 years, 15 years, 20 years younger than him, and on top of it, he dies seven, eight, ten years before her. She's sitting around with a, for a long time, just driving his car, <laughs> and banging his friends. <laughs> Elliot, it's tragic. Sounds really. right. It's about right, right? That's 
That's why all those uh, old, old age homes are all filled with women. There's no dudes in there. We die. It should be the other way around. If mm. we're going to die seven years earlier, and by the way, uh, the, you, well, you know, women, you guys never bring up that part. You know, it's a lot of complaints about, well, we get 70 cents to your dollar, and we're held back, and uh, we, uh, uh, we're, we got hormonal issues, and, you know, but what about the part where we die almost a decade before you do? Anyone ever want to bring that up? That, that's a perk. That's a perk to having ovaries, is it not? The extra 10 years you get to spend on the fucking planet spending our money? <laughs> Not bad, right? Yeah. Pretty good we, perk. We get all the breaks. Yeah, I'm just saying, it rarely comes up. You get a break on your insurance, and you live an extra seven, seven eight years or something. It's not bad. I have a theory about that. It's, Which is? That's a little insulting. <laughs> but that's never stopped you before. Well. Just a little? Um. <clears throat> I'm uh, up on stage burning calories, and uh, my wife right now is at home. Oh, like in suspended animation. Uh, I'll be in Denver over the weekend burning some calories. My wife's kind of eh, hanging with the kids right Like now. you have a certain amount of life force, and you're just whipping through yours faster. Yeah, yeah. Stress. You know what I mean? Uh, too much travel, too many, too many early mornings, too many early call times for the great Elliot Gould. <laughs> This is excellent for the people that are just listening in their cars right now. Because <laughs> they don't even believe me. I could have just said we had Willie Nelson up here and they'd be like, yeah, that's cool. All right, yeah. So I think you burn yourself out. I think guys, I think, I think they burn themselves out. Right. I don't know, I don't know there's a biological thing. I think guys, and, they, and then you end up doing things like smoking and drinking and stuff like that. Well, that we just need to it. find some really lazy, uh, sedentary guys and find out how long they live. Oh, we got him, my dad. How's he doing? <laughs> he's he's 81, and he's uh, still going strong. Hell so, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I explained to my dad uh, in his kind of uh, terms as I, as I could the other day that he was like a, you know, a kind of a crappy car, but with almost no mileage on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like if you took a Chevy Chevette and just put it up on blocks in your garage in 1973, it's still a piece of shit, but it's brand new. It's, a, it's pristine. He still has that new human smell. <laughs> yeah, he's not a good model. You know, he's not, a, he's not a Ferrari or a Corvette. He's a shitty model that's almost brand new because he's never been driven like in the, in the snow. How do you take that news? You know, it, I told him he was... <laughs> I, also, well, I sort of told him he was just low mileage, like lot, not a lot of days on the roof working out in the sun, not a lot of super stressful business meetings, not a lot of burning the midnight oil. You know, he's kind of... Uh, he's like veal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what he's like? He's like slippers. You put them on, but you don't go jogging in them. You don't wear them outside. You don't run in them. They never see the rain. They're still shoes. You can get some mileage on them. Just not tough miles. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, not running on, you're not, no trail mileage on slippers. That's all carpeted miles. Right. My dad's been on nothing but carpeting his whole life. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, we got pictures? Oh, there's my dad. There he is, yeah. Plays his trumpet, walks around in slippers. <laughs> Elliot, what do you think of this? How do you feel? How's your health? Talking to the mic. My health is fine, thank you. You good? Yeah. You good? The water was not open, so nothing spilled. Yes, I know. Would you like some water? No, thank you. Would you like some mangria? I'll try it. You'll try mangria? That's good. We gotta get him out of his shell. <laughs> By the way, uh, Do you think I'm in a shell? Yeah. You're wrong. Oh, really? I'm out of the shell. Oh, you're out? Oh, this is you out? This is me, yeah. Wow. I've, I've, I've seen you be so dynamic. I'm an actor. Oh, that's it. That's... <laughs> but what? What? Now, that's a good point here, uh, Mr. Gould. There, use your uh, hand there and taste some of my uh, signature mangria. This, this is going to get you into a shell? <laughs> no, no, there's no shells for this. Let's talk about this uh, acting for for a moment. You want to talk some more? Yeah. <laughs> Even a little more than this, yeah. Did you watch the Oscars? Yes. 
And um, I noticed that a lot of the actors didn't seem to want to go to rehearsal. I don't know about rehearsal. Oh, you mean when they were dancing? No, when not, well, when they were dancing a little bit, but when they do the Oscars, they go, hey, could you come out on Thursday and do like a, t a rehearsal where you read the teleprompter and do that? And all the, ans all the actors just go, the fuck The presenters. It. Yeah, I don't know no. that that's true. I've done the awards several times. Oh, let's talk about that. We just did. Oh, okay, that's, that's, that's over. <laughs> let's talk about it again. What? When let's you talk did, about it again. When you were asked to present <laughs> yes. at the Academy Awards, did they ask you to come for a run-through? Of course. Oh, okay. Did you show up? Yes, I did. That's you. That's what I'm saying. I, I would say most, if not everyone, shows up. Do you know something that I don't know? I don't think the guys from the X-Men showed up. A Avengers? <laughs> yeah, and I think the people, some of the people show up and they read that teleprompter and they stumble through it and clearly there was not a rehearsal process with them. And I think when you say to... Uh, Jennifer Lopez, we need you here on Wednesday to rehearse. She goes, her publicist says, I can't be there until Sunday afternoon. I'm in New York. Sorry. It's either this way or no way. What do you think of that? You showed up and rehearsed. Well, you, 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 you uh, went from the four guys from the Avengers right. to Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was fair to Jennifer Lopez. And as far as the four guys from the Avengers, who gives a shit? I don't. <laughs> The main guy is working. I, the viewers, do, I, I'm a viewer and I give a shit because I don't want to see them fumble and stumble through their presentation. Yes, you do. Oh, you're probably right. That was, it's more fun. But the point is, is well, okay, so what was the schedule? Unless there's anyone else in this room that's presented at the Oscars. Just three. Okay, so, we're, but I got Elliot on stage, so I'm going to talk to him. What is the schedule then for presenting at the Oscars? How did it work the last time you did it? Well, that was some time ago, but you know we have to come in uh, before the day of the show. Right. Uh, work with the director, work with the cameras, work with the stage managers, so as we would have an idea of what was going on. And do you remember who you were out there with, or what you presented last time you did it? Well, yeah, I was with Isabella Johnny, mm -hmm. and uh, we presented the best editing. Uh, to Verna Fields, who uh, did Jaws. Oh, he did Jaws? Jo she did Jaws. And, and when, at that point, the NCAA uh, championship game was on uh, at the same time as the Academy Awards, and I heard the score, and it was uh, Indiana 86 and Michigan 68. And so when they said the winner is, I announced the score. <laughs> and, and they haven't had me back since. <laughs> So that was not in the rehearsal, uh, no, obviously. No, no, no. I obviously. think that's fine. Now, do you, would you, how many Oscars have you attended in general? Um, perhaps four. Four. Perhaps four, yes. Could be as many as five and as little no, no, as four three. Seems, four seems <laughs> four, right. Four is good? Four seems right. Yeah. And uh, biggest star who's uh, not with us anymore that you, that you well, met or they, hung they out with? sat me next to uh, John Wayne. I don't know that name, and my last, my last name is Wayne, okay? How's it feel, douche? <laughs> how, was the, how was the Duke? What was he like? Very nice. Really? And uh, this was, uh, how, how long then after that did he, did he pass away? I don't know. I don't count. Yeah, stupid question. You wouldn't know that. <laughs> no one would have that just uh, at their fingertips. You know I, I, mean? I met him when I was three. Really? Yeah, because he lived um, in Newport Beach or wow, had spent time howdy, there. Wow, howdy, little Jew. <laughs> <laughs> the story I heard was something like that, but it was little girl. Oh, Maybe it was okay, cleaned right. up. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. So I was in this men's store at ease, and my parents were there too, but like I was over here, and they were over here, and then he came up and was like, oh, you're a cute little girl, in, in the John Wayne voice, you know, and mm -hmm. was talking to me, and then my dad was like, oh, my God, you know, totally starstruck, and came over and like, oh, you know, I'm the father of that cute little girl. I think John Wayne cared not at all about my dad. He was one of the first guys that everyone figured out they could do an impression of. Yes. And thus, everyone did John Wayne, even people who couldn't do impressions. He was walking before walking. Yeah. And then there was, I, I'm going to work out the order one of these days of uh, Jimmy Cagney was probably number one of the guys that people did impressions of, or maybe they did of Caesar, but there's no recorded evidence of that. You know what I'm saying? 
Oh, no. I, when you said Caesar, I thought you were talking about Edward G. Robinson. Did he play Caesar? Little Caesar. Oh, yeah. The, in, uh, yeah. All right. In, uh, was he in White Heat? Ma, ma. Ma. Yeah. So Edward G. <laughs> Robinson, Jimmy Cagney. <laughs> Then there was, uh, well, maybe W.C. Fields. I'm going to work this out. It might take a, a decade or so. Uh, who's the Jimmy, number one? Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. Who's the number yeah. one female that, it, you know, and then Ron Reagan and guys like that. But who, who, who do you think the number one female? May West. May West. Oh, that's a good one. This guy's on a, Please tell me you know who May West is. Do you know who May West is? <laughs> I've heard it. All right, doesn't know. I don't know. <laughs> Randy West, you know Randy West at all? Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. All right, Mae West. Yeah. Ellie Gould. Betty Davis. Betty Davis. Yeah. Catherine Who? Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. All right. This is boring now. It, <laughs> I brought it up and I'm bored with it. All right, should we do uh, one more question? Maybe get some news and things like that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, the movie. Just tell us a little about this movie. I'm jumping around a lot, but... Uh, Don't you know anything about it? It's in theaters. I know, uh, and direct 22nd. TV cinema, March 22nd. That's all I, I have, yeah. My gut is that it's about a young woman uprooted <laughs> from the San Fernando Valley into the whirlwind of downtown L.A. I mean, but that's just my gut. I, I think you'll love it. I have a feeling about Sarah. Movie. Sarah Rue is uh, is the girl. She plays my daughter, and she's mm -hmm. quite wonderful. She's a talented. Is, is she thin now? She just had a baby, so I don't know what she looks like. Now. Uh huh. I feel like the uh, chicks that have the baby and then snap back in the shape is no big deal anymore because everyone seems to be doing it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. How do they do it? I don't know, but they just do it, mm -hmm. and it's no big whoop anymore. And Sarah Rue was from a TV show that was called Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. No. No, she was. There was. A, what was her TV show? What was her TV show? Really? Paul Harvey, do you know? <laughs> uh, all right. Last question. Let's go to the audience here. Yeah, Matt. Uh, let's stick with Illinois. Matt Branham. 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 Yeah. Good times. Wow. Yeah, three guys awesome. from Illinois. I don't really remember the question. Uh, I think it was about the, the backfire of apps like Banging with Friends, where you can actually sexually hook up with people you he already know. He was in know. Friends? Yes, so this more applies to you, actually. Right. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, there, there are apps that you can get on your phone where you can hook up with people who you already know, mm -hmm. where if you say, I would hook up with her, and she says she'd hook up with you, it'll tell you that. Yeah, but is it, it yes. but how do you already know them? Facebook. Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Facebook so, so you just walk around sort of holding this phone by your <laughs> cock or over your head or like until some, you, you get pinged by it's people. It's like a cock GPS. And yeah. Can I say it, that? It's weird. It, 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 every piece of technology eventually just goes toward getting laid. Yeah. Like uh, eventually it starts off as, oh, this is going to be a fine way to find your car in a parking lot when it gets dark. And then it goes into, you'll be knee deep in pussy in a matter of, <laughs> matter of moments yep. with this. So uh, I, I don't think uh, you guys are but all the, single. And the trick of this is that it's people that you're already friends with. So what yeah. the backfire of that would be just right. catastrophic. Yeah. Wait, do you mean the <laughs> Do you mean the backfiring I, I it, after you sleep together or the backfiring of just like finding out this person doesn't feel the same way think, about you? I don't think that anything good can actually come from that. Well, you can have sex with someone who wants to have sex with you <laughs> that you already know. I, I just think it could get really awkward really quickly. Yeah, like this like question. This, yeah. <laughs> so for, this took a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right, I want to cleanse my palate. I want one more question. I need some uh, sorbet. I need a question sorbet. Okay, well, this one's about a story. Where's Mike from Cincinnati? Mike Luke to Mike from Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Now, there's a guy. There's a guy. Listen, there's no... There's no dumb questions. There's just some, some are retarded, and that, that, that was one. Go ahead, Mike. I do know who Paul Harvey is, but uh, we all love a good... Love story. I know Allison loves uh, the rom-coms. How did you meet your wife, and, and what attracted her to you? 
with your history of awesomeness. Uh-huh. Uh, I was doing a, an event with uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, he was Jimmy the sports guy at K-Rock. He was doing a uh, come on out Monday night football at some crappy club. It's the kind of thing you do when you do radio and you try to supplement your income with an extra like 300 bucks a week if you come on out to uh, touchdowns on Monday nights and then sit there and you like you, you say during the morning show, hey, I'm going to be out of touchdowns on, on Monday night watching Monday night football and we got free beer koozies and keychains with K-Rock on it. Come on down and meet Jimmy the Sports Guy. And um, Jimmy the Sports Guy, who I was just hanging out with anyway, said, uh, you want to come down there? And they said, yeah. And so they said, uh, well, Mr. Burcham, who was my character, is going to be with Jimmy the Sports Guy. And we went down to this little club that's something else, I don't know, on uh, Ventura Boulevard. And I had already shot the pilot for Loveline, the TV show, which was going to be a syndicated show at the time. And my uh, wife, uh, then uh, stranger, Lynette, worked for the syndicated company. She worked for the company that syndicated the show. And so she wanted to come down and meet me. And she wanted to meet Jimmy. And she's a big fan of Jimmy and, I think, Mr. Burcham. But she also knew that Mr. Burcham was the guy who was in this syndicated TV show pilot that she had. So she came down with her friends. Uh, the place was kind of empty. Like, there wasn't really the turnout we were hoping for. And Jimmy and I were just sort of sitting uh, on, the, on the edge of the stage. And uh, my, my wife and her friend uh, both came in. And uh, I just took a look at her. And, uh, and she, I asked her if she was single. Because, look, what, what the hell? I mean, you got to ask. And I was single. And, and also, you know, what's chick going to get? How offended are you going to get? You know what I mean? I didn't, yeah, no. I didn't say, are you single? Can I finger bang you? I just said, are you single? You know, it's not, not the world's worst question. And, and she said, uh, but, but the, the real thing was is she had this TV pilot that I'd done three months ago and I'd never seen it. So I used that as an excuse. I said, oh, well, do you think I, I, we could, I could call you and you could get me a copy of this and all this kind of stuff? And she said, no problem. And that was my excuse to call her and ask her out. And in, in general, I found it's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, which is if you say to a woman, like you're trying to ask a, a chick out, all you have to do is like bring up a movie. You just bring up a movie. And if they go, I want to see that, then you're in. And if they go, I've seen it and it sucked, you're out. <laughs> and if they have seen it, but they say, I'll see it again, you're getting blown. <laughs> That's how it works. It's a simple equation. It's a very simple yeah, equation. Yeah, it's, it's a girl code. Yeah, it's girl code, right? <laughs> if, if it's some creepy dude, some creepy dude is standing next to you, and he's talking about mountain bike riding, or he's talking about anything, and oh, he's I would, creepy. I would make it clear that I have zero interest in that. Yeah, you're like, my dad died in a mountain bike incident, yeah. you know, so it's, <laughs> and it's pretty fresh. It's pretty <laughs> fresh. Right. But if cool dude, who you like a lot, is talking about mountain bike riding. I actually, and you know that I'm not someone who would ride a bike to the beach early in the morning, ever. Mm -hmm. But I did that because, I, because a guy that I liked was yeah. doing that and asked if I wanted to go. Right, right. So, yeah. yeah. That's how much we'll pretty much do right. whatever. If you're really into the guy, like. he yeah. could be like, I'm into uh, American Indian rituals involving rattlesnakes and pits. Yeah. You in? That sounds interesting. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah, take your shoes off. Don't worry. Just don't move fast. You'll be cool. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, show you, uh, Mr. Gould. How you doing? You holding up? Yes, thank you. You doing good? Mm-hmm. This movie. Let's talk about this movie. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'm seeing a young gal, red hair, maybe just crapped out a kid. You know what I mean? Sarah Rue, just for, or Sarah Lee, or just one of them, living out in the valley making her way to downtown L.A. and the trials and tribulations that go along with that move. I play her father. You play her father. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I and have to say, to be uprooted from San Fernando Valley to the whirlwind of downtown L.A., that's not like a real far uprooting. Sarah uprooted. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably South made Asian that man. joke on the set, right? I didn't understand what you just said. What you just said. Oh. See? 
<laughs> Not easy, is it? <laughs> Thought it was so easy, didn't what you? What did you say? What did you ask? <laughs> oh. Oh, I said that that's not, like, to go from the valley to downtown L.A. is really not that far a distance. No, I worked in China also. <laughs> you worked in China. Oh, on what, on what, uh... On a film? Put that in your film. menorah and smoke it. <laughs> you have no idea how a menorah would you, works, do you? This would be fun. I know it involves fire. Did you, uh, what'd you do in China? Another movie, Sarah Rue? No, Sarah wasn't in it. No! Huh. I like when people take the last conversation and bring it into the yeah. next one. Don't you like that? It makes it... So you and Sarah Rue in China, huh? What was that about? Well, it was called uh, Hotel Shanghai. Uh-huh. It was by uh, the woman who wrote The Grand Hotel. Wow. And that was when? 1995. And... Oh, that's when you were in, when you were in China. When I was in China, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite um, role that you've done? Oh, the most popular one was uh, Trapper uh, John in M.A.S.H. But I don't, I don't really have favorites, you know, except for you. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is, well, his favorite role is that of a dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, of a dad? No, I'm a granddad. A granddad, that's your favorite role. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I'm going to tell my kid my favorite role is that of your father, but my most important role was the guy I played in The Hammer. <laughs> That's my... I'm going to make it super clear. How old is your kid? They're between five and nine. <laughs> there's two of them. One, there's six. One of each? They're, yeah, they're six, six years of age, and I have a boy and a girl, and they're uh, twins, and I always say the... Uh, Girl is like raising three kids, and the boy's like raising one old cat. <laughs> Just nothing. Just sits. He, he, well, he did. He, he, he vomited at school and pulled up a fur ball at school today. <laughs> and uh, they sent him home. And uh, then when I came downstairs, he was just sitting on the sofa watching his, uh, you know, television that's actually. You know, they, me they measured... Oh, my God. Hold on. Mind blown. Elliot, prepare to have your mind explode, dude. Okay. <laughs> I grew up watching a goddamn 13-inch black and white Zenith. Right? Yes. My son is watching, like, a 63-inch flat panel TV. He's not 63 inches tall. He's probably 39 inches tall. That TV dwarfs him. I mean, if you laid him horizontally, and that's how you, me you, you measure him horizontally, or, or, or diagonally, sorry, you measure him diagonally. If you laid him diagonally, and I'm going to do it with some duct tape when I get home, <laughs> I'm then take a picture of it. It's going to be a funny tweet there. But he is not as long as the TV set is. Wow. I, I, I think... Well, all right, but hold on. I think if he stretched his arms out and pointed his little tootsies, he wouldn't make it diagonally from one side to the other, and that's pretty good living. That's, that sounds awesome. <laughs> oh, well, hold on. If I was six years old and I was staring at a TV that was bigger than me, I would freak out. That's not bad. That's good times. Uh, yes, and but what I was just thinking is, and, and he's yet, being raised by Guatemalan woman that's bigger than me. <laughs> and yet, all of us also watch things on screens that are the size of our iPhone. We got a lot of range. Yeah. Back when uh, I was coming up, it was like, well, you had a 13 inch, and if you stepped up and you were living large, you had like a 19 inch. <laughs> now we have postage stamp and the one they have hanging at uh, Texas Stadium. Those are our two choices. And we seem to be happy with both. Right. That's a lot of adjustment, wouldn't you say, Elliot Gould? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of range. You think about that. You know what? We got to take this on the road, me and you, Elliot. This is... I mean, don't get me wrong. You guys are fine, and this is a cool way to get started, but you don't want to limit it to this, uh, this audience. You know what I mean? I don't see us moving into arenas or stadiums yet, but I see us starting us off time. with... I see us moving into, you know, 1,000, maybe 1,500-seat theaters, venues like that, and then eventually stepping into some of the... You know, we'll play the Will Turn out here in L.A., maybe do Radio City. You know what I mean? Ellie and Adam. Uh, yeah, Elliot. Adam and Elliot. Adam and Elliot, okay. Adam and Elliot. <laughs> Coming at you, you know what I mean? Maybe some Q&A at the end? That's funny. Yeah, that's good, right? Yeah, that's good. All right, sorry. Yeah, Brian. Can I ask Mr. Gould a question about his career? 
Good luck. <laughs> I'll translate. Mr. Gould, you were in a movie I like very much called American History X. And uh, the, yeah. The, the director was supposedly a real character and tough to work with on set, Tony Kay. Did you experience any of that or witness any of that or have any interesting stories? Be prepared from... for an avalanche of information, my son. <laughs> Buckle up. No, Tony Kay, uh, he was uh, very demanding and had a, a vision of mm -hmm. how he wanted things to be. And I believe that Ed Norton went a little crazy with him, but uh, he was okay with me. Supposedly, Ed Norton like edited the film afterwards, or had you know something to do with it after the fact. It, but well, they didn't get along. Did. Uh, perhaps uh, he did some of that. But uh, he's a nice guy. Tony Kay did a lot of commercials, and he's made a picture recently with Adrian Brody, and uh, he's a nice man. The uh, the the deal with directors where they go, well, that guy's really he heads. <laughs> That's him. Where they're really oh. <laughs> So now you know what I'm saying. He's, he's looks a little, he's looks a little like Andy Dick, doesn't he's, it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Andy ever got his shit together, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, if Andy got outside, start hitting the gym, you know, going to the gym, put down the syringe, yeah, he could look like that. Um, here's the thing, like, they have these things, like, where you're a director, you have a vision, and then you're calling the shots, and then you ha kind of have to be bossy, because it's your film that you're making, so you can't just go, well, let's just do this by committee. But, uh, Gould, you guys were, uh, you guys were cool. Yeah, you, you absolutely. Any, yeah. Sure. Anyone you didn't get along with? No. no never? I can get along with you. I can wow. get along with anyone. <laughs> He's busting chops and breaking hearts up here, ladies. <laughs> So what's the, uh, oh, I don't care. Well, you know what? There are none. There are none? No. Mm -hmm. uh, you come uh, Brooklyn? Where are you from? Yeah. Brooklyn. And uh, came out, what was your first, like, uh, trip out here? Yeah. Uh, August 29th, 1963. Ooh, now we're getting specific. And uh, you were born in 39? No, 38. Oh, 38. Oh, I'm trying to make it a year younger. Yeah. And you came out here. What was the occasion? Oh, my wife uh, uh, at the time was singing here. Uh-huh. And so you came out with her. No, did no, you? I came out to see her. I came out to be here. Right. And, and were you thinking about acting at that time? Uh, well, I was uh, uh, doing shows on Broadway. Oh, well, let's think about uh, acting. I, I don't think that I had been in a movie at that time. And at that point, it was between a th theatrical career and auctioning off livestock? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke there, I felt saying. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, well, then what was the big break? It was before, before MASH? Uh, I guess it was uh, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Right. Paul Mazursky's uh, first sure. film. And, and uh, then MASH came after that, which exactly. was probably the... Uh, Probably the role that you're most most known for. He's nodding his head in agreement. Should we? Uh, but should we so do wait, the the wife that you came out to see though was Barbara Streisand, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that was singer. Right. Oh yeah, that's it. By the way, reach around and pat yourself on the back, Allison. That's uh, that's smooth. All right, let's talk are. about Babs for a second. Oh. Babs. I call her Babs. Wow, look at you. You got a great cop mustache. <laughs> You could have pulled almost anyone over at that point. <laughs> you could have been, you could have ridden a moped and gotten in and told we people to get out of their car. We were making mash at that point. Ah, and I she see. asked me to escort her. And that's when she won her first Academy Award. How long were you uh, two married? Uh, eight years. Eight years. And how, uh, how was she? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, she has a reputation yeah. for, uh, I don't know being difficult or something? No, she's brilliant, and she's uh, a wonderful uh, woman and uh, very demanding. Right. And uh, she's the mother of my son. She's, she's brilliant, but demanding. Well, of course. Aren't you? I, I feel like I try to be demanding, and then everyone tells me to shut up. But here's how it works now. Now you can be brilliant like me and go, here's my demand, and then you get... You're not the boss of me. 
and then that's it. Back then, when you were brilliant and demanding, like I, I feel like, I, I, first off, if, uh, if Frank Sinatra was me, he would have had at least 165 people killed already. Just <laughs> most of them parking valets. But he might have. He, he might have. And what I'm saying is, is you could be brilliant and demanding back then. You can't really be b- brilliant and demanding now because you get shit. People talk shit about you on Twitter and they post stuff and then you get a bad reputation. Like, oh, he thinks just because he has money he gets to, to do this or just because she has uh, a couple of Grammys she can be a bitch in front of us. You see what I'm saying? It's like a different society I, I now. understand. No, I don't think it is. You don't? No, I don't. You think... But don't you... Th- like, like here's, here's the point. There... Everybody who's worked for everybody will now like write a book or write some put some stuff on the internet or something something something. You know, like back in the day, if Barbara fired a housekeeper, that housekeeper would go to the, on the internet and talk about what a bitch she was. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, that's fairly common, isn't it? It is, but they have a modality to do that now. They didn't really have it before. A friend of ours, uh, Sammy Kahn, who's a wonderful composer, Mm -hmm. he wrote the second time around, he wrote a song called Everybody's Got the Right to Be Wrong at Least Once. Mm -hmm. All right, I get you. So why, who who dumped who? Oh, it was uh, mutual. uh, Really? They they always say that. (laughs) But if it's really true, it's got to be nice, right? Uh, no, I, I think that, you know, there's, uh, uh, it's challenging. But if it's a mutual thing, it's got to be better. I mean, you know, if I just woke up one day and my wife was like, you know what, I don't be married to you anymore. And I was like, wow, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> That'd be much better That's than what? Good. I'm in love. What are you doing to me? You know what I mean? One way or the other. That's funny. Is that how it worked? I mean, she just woke up. Did she sing it to you? Yes. I want a divorce. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. What should we do? Should we do some news? Well, I have my book excerpt. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, Elliot. Be prepared to be blown away, my friend. <laughs> this is good. All right. Well, we have to explain it. Mm-hmm. So um, this is what I'd expect if I were expecting. And it's the memoir of my pregnancy that I'm writing before I'm pregnant. Well, yeah, this I said, doesn't everyone, start when I... This has, start, that just starts when it, when it starts. Everyone has a kid, and then they write a book. But I'm saying... I said a few years ago, write the book first. Yeah, because if I do get pregnant, then I'm definitely not going to have the time to write a memoir about it. And I'm also right. working on one for when I go to rehab now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so anyway, it's what I'd expect if I were expecting, although I realized earlier that it's also like what an asshole would expect if an asshole were expecting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, here we go. I've always been what you'd call a spiritual person, but since becoming pregnant, I've been learning to access my inner goddess, and I've been getting even more in touch with my spiritual side. I've begun drinking loose leaf tea, though yes, I will accept a sachet on rare occasion, and I listen to guided meditations while Yoshi does my nails at the new formaldehyde free salon in town, Tips and Sass. (laughs) I'm happy to report that I've been going to a really deep, wonderful place while meditating on the following question. What does it truly mean to be pregnant? For one, it means I'm a really great person. I know this because my higher power, whom I choose to call God, but you can call whatever you want, be it God or Jesus, created a miracle. Well, correction, I did the work and created a space for a miracle and was open to it, and then he or she created it. Also, it means I'm generous, brave, and courageous, which is obvious. And lastly, it means that I'm glowing, which I kind of already always was, but now when I come into a room, it's like, turn your sparkle down, girl, which I won't because I refuse to diminish myself just to make others more comfortable. You know what's comfortable? Death. Life is uncomfortable, and it isn't a dress rehearsal. Did I just make that up? LOL, I'm amazing. (laughs) And then upcoming chapters include, hi, men the story of how I lost my hymen. (laughs) Do I miss my period? Does a fish miss a bicycle? (laughs) And here, let me get that for me. Or chivalry really is dead when you're pregnant. Alice Morales and everybody. All right, should we do uh, a little news? Yes. Elliot, you just uh, hang out, drink some mangria, and crack wise when you hear a news story that uh, tickles your fancy. The news. 
News with Allison Rosen. She read some news from her iPad. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's Allison. Who? Allison. Who? And when it's time to wrap it up, she'll sign it off with zip it cut. It's Allison. What? Allison. What? of Dancing with the Stars has Ooh. been announced. For anyone who... Elliot, I don't know if you know that Adam was in Dancing oh, with the Stars. Oh, he knows. Oh, he, he does? He accosted me on the sidewalk. He's out of his mind with that Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I think, think I'm kidding. He, he said... I'm not first sure. Thing he said to me. Really? Are yeah. you, you're a big fan, Elliot? Well, yeah, I, I do watch it. I, you know, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, would you like to know who's going to be in season mm-hmm. 16? Mm-hmm. Winona Judd. Uh huh. Oh, oh, I think she's just doing it to lose weight. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, D.L. Hughley. Wait a minute. Hughley. Right? Hughley. I knew. I know that it's. I now, know that it really is one, Mike. and Mike August says the other. Mike August calls the rock band Dawkin Dokin. <laughs> Number one. And you know these people that mispronounce things and then claim the whole world is mispronouncing it? Like when Penn yes. Jillette said the word forte is not forte. It's it fort. is fort. Oh my God. <laughs> By the way, this is one of the greatest moments in uh, television history. Or at least top five. Uh, <laughs> we were trying to think of the name. When I, when, I, when I was doing Celebrity Apprentice, we were trying to think of a name for our team. I was pitching Honey Badger. They weren't, George Takei wasn't going for it. He's like, how about Galactic War? It's like, all right, you did three years on a piece of shit show that people make fun of behind your back, and you have to turn everything into something Star Trek. But anyway, and by the way, people, can we please stop pretending we like Star Trek? Please, knock it off. It was a piece of shit then. It sucks now. Please stop treating these guys like they're heroes. They're crappy actors in a horribly produced show that lasts the two seasons of the 60s, and we treat them like they're royal. It's so retarded. What's up with you idiots? All right. Number one. Oh, number two. So we named our team, I don't know, Unity or whatever the hell we were. And they named their team Forte. (laughs) But we didn't know they named their team Forte. And we, uh, we were talking about, you know, the names and things like that. And before that, and Penn Gillette was saying, it's pronounced Fort. You don't say Forte, because I said Forte in the van. And Gillette said, it's Fort. You can't make the mistake of speaking in front of Penn Gillette. He'll correct <laughs> you. You're know, like, my name is Adam. Your name is Adam. <laughs> really? I've been mispronouncing my name all this time? Absolutely. <laughs> so he says, anyway, he gets traded later on to play for what team? Fort. <laughs> Team Fort, yes. The one word he pronounces differently That's than every hilarious. person on the planet. Yes. And so Mike August says he used to represent D.L. Hugely, but uh, he pronounces it Hugely, and that's his goddamn business. Thank you. Who else? All right. Sarah Rue, Elliot Gould, who's on there? Uh, Jacob, is it Jacoby Jones or Jacoby Jones? Jacoby. Jacoby Jones, Lisa Vanderpump. And- oh, Wait a minute, I don't know where she's from. <laughs> <laughs> that show my wife makes me watch for four hours every yeah. weekend? Yeah, that was definitely an O of non-recognition. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, one of the uh, Beverly Hills housewives. Andy Dick. Andy Dick? hmm Wow, with those crazy frames and everything? Yes. Mm-hmm. Did, I'm going nuts because didn't someone come onto the show wearing glasses like that? And weren't we kind of... Bucking. Yes, we're Who making fun of Bean Baxter from Kevin and Bean. That's right. Okay. Who um, had the crazy glasses like the director did. Yes. yes. Victor Ortiz. Uh, boxer. boxer. Okay, Victor Ortiz, boxer. Zen- Go ahead. No, no, I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. Mm. Zendaya Coleman, she's a Disney star. I, I, here's my deal <gasps> with that thing where they go, oh, no, she's a big star. And you go, I've never heard of her. Oh, she's huge. You go, I've never heard of her. She's massive. You know, the people, the, the less you've heard of her, the bigger they yeah. get. She's, everyone in the galaxy is aware of her. Mm. Uh-huh. And then, basically, what they're calling you as an idiot. Yeah. Because you're going, oh, like what I did with Paul Harvey and that guy. Like, I was like, you know, they go, oh, no, everybody, every, everybody except for the next goddamn person I ask who this person is knows. And then that person's, an, so then we become the only two people on the planet according to this person who doesn't know who this other person is I don't, I don't know what's going on with this Disney world but they always do that oh she's a huge huge Disney star yeah yeah I got that treatment when I didn't know who the Wiggles were uh huh are they huge 
they're huge. I wish if, my friend were here right now. They're huge if you're not huge. Right. If you're under 40 pounds, they're huge. You call me fat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Allie Raceman, Olympic Who? gymnast. Oh, okay. Now, here's the thing. Dorothy Hamill is also one of them, and I'll go on and tell, the, tell you the rest of them. However, I feel like um, an Olympian has a leg up, wouldn't you say? Oh, um, yes. I, I, well, first off, I did mine with uh, Christy Yamaguchi, and um, people were... People are idiots. We were in a limousine, and we're going to go to Oprah's show. And they had two limousines. And they had, you know, all, you know, seven or eight of us in one big stretch and seven or eight of us in another. And I was in, uh, again, with Penn Gillette, which is weird. Every time I do a reality (laughs) show, it's with him. And... Everyone was like, ooh, who's going to win this thing? We're going to go announce who, the, who, who was on on Oprah. Who's going to win? And I said, what do you mean who's going to win this thing? Christy Yamaguchi's going to win this thing. And they're like, uh, I don't know about that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Of course she's going to win this yeah. thing. She's an Olympic skier. She's an ice dancer. And they're like, I don't know. I don't know about that. And I said... Uh, why wouldn't she win this thing? And they were like, well, she's used to dance. She's used to dancing, but on ice. And I said, that's like saying, <laughs> that's like saying, yeah, that guy can, uh, he can juggle on a snowboard, but let's see him do it on carpeting. <laughs> I was like, of course he's gonna, she's gonna fucking, it's gonna be easier yeah. for her to do it. And then I, and then everyone's kind of looking at me and they're nodding and I said, uh, but we got one thing working for us. We got one thing going for us here. One thing that's gonna go for, in our advantage. And everyone like leaned in and I said, she's Japanese and those people have a super bad work ethic. <laughs> and everyone, everyone was confused for one second and then they all laughed and then I said, now who's a racist? Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> so I knew at that point she was gonna smash everybody. And then I asked her, where do you live? And she's like, well, where, where do I live now? At, at, the, at the dance hotel. Her family is all back in like North Carolina. She moved here for three months to practice 14 hours a day. And her basic schedule when she was working with her partner doing the doubles thing back in the day is like, you know, meet and do, you know, three hours of practice on the hardwood and then go out to the ice for another seven hours and then I don't know, five hours of Kegel exercises or whatever. Like, she's going to smash us. This is what she does for a living. And uh, by her third dance, she was better than her partner. Well, she's an Olympic caliber athlete. And then also, at a a certain point, here's where I knew we were all in trouble. It was like this, this first dance or second day or whatever. And I looked down at her foot, and she's wearing her heels and her whatever. And she has a huge softball sized lump on her foot like she had a sprained ankle or t- torn something and I, I was like just talking to her and I, I looked I like looked down I was like oh my god look at your ankle it's so swollen and she went don't worry about it and I was like whoa like she's like she told the doctor the dance doctor give me the needle I'm going out there handful of Percocet I'm going I'm playing she's a dance warrior she's like the female Japanese diminutive RG3. You know what I mean? I mean, I think it's a pretty good analogy right there. Pretty solid. Like if he, if he, if, you know, if he didn't have dreadlocks and was Asian, mm-hmm. you know, and had a vagina. Spitting image. Yeah. It's, same we're talking about person, the same human yeah. being here. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, Ingo Rademacher, who's from General Hospital. Yeah. What was your soap? My soap? Did you have well, one Well, I was always a big fan of Blackie. Don't play stupid. You don't know who Stamos' character was in uh, One Afternoon to Go? <laughs> wow. See, for me, he really came alive in Full House. I no, forgot. No, he forgot. was always Bla- Elliot. Tell her. No? Was it One Life to don't Live? Don't play coy. Like, you don't watch your shows. Those are your shows. He was in, like, you know. Gen- was it One Life to Live? General Hospital? I don't know. Is there anybody out there that knows anything? General Hospital. General Hospital. Yeah, he's Blackie in General Hospital. I'm sorry, that's a... Yeah. I feel embarrassed. Originally, the role was supposed to be played by young Denzel Washington. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Kelly. (laughs) Thank Thank you. Thank you very much. Listen, you want to laugh at good stuff, fuck off. I'm taking a hit off yourself. Sorry. 
<laughs> Go ahead. Ke- Kelly Pickler. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that is. And then Dorothy Hamill, like I said. So that seems wildly unfair to me. Mm-hmm. All right, well, who's the favorite, though? Who's the early favorite? It's, it's the whoever's in, whoever, whoever the gymnast was, right? I, I, yeah, I would bet it's Allie Raisman. Mm-hmm. That's the gymnast. Right. Um, a replica of the Titanic is being built. Really? And people, yeah, and people will be able to, you know, board it and oh, go on it. Yeah, it's, it's better than, <laughs> one would hope, the original Titanic. There's more lifeboats and whatnot. Are scale Titanic? It, I think it's a little bigger, actually. It, it can fit more people, but it'll have the same, um, like, the same amenities inside the ship, the same... I mean, you've seen the movie, right? They the had staircase. a movie about that boat? <laughs> yeah. No! <laughs> Ellie, did you know there was a movie about the uh, Titanic boat? Several. Several? Mm-hmm. I've just been a little, I mean, I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. I like when people make lame excuses. <laughs> right. I was out last couple of weekends, so I don't know what's Missed going history, on. Missed yeah. history, yeah. Same grand staircase and stuff. And there will be early 20th century style clothes and undergarments in everyone's cabin to get them in the mood in case they want to. You know, uh, recreate the, the, the everything. Dress and period, period, period garb. garb. Yes, and just like in 1912, there will be three classes of passengers, and you'll only be allowed to go like where your your ticket allows you. Oh, so you're being so, steerage. Yeah. yeah. By the way, one of those things that sounds worse than it actually is. I think so. Period garb. If you think about it. That's what I'm going to start calling. That's the worst porn star ever. Yeah. Who are you working with? Period garb. Oh boy. Tough draw. Good luck to you. <laughs> Bring a wet nap. <laughs> you don't work with period draw. I'm going to start calling certain garb, items of yeah. mine period garb. Period garb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Ever anyway. work with period garb? Uh huh. He's nodding his head if you're listening. Check Would that. you want to go? I mean, okay, so, so people will be able to go on this Titanic 2 in 2016. All right, so hold on a second now. A, an actual cruise ship line is building a r- replica of it's the Titanic. An Australian billionaire Clive Palmer contracted with a Chinese shipbuilder to build this ship. And we, and by the way, when you're building a, a full-scale replica of the Titanic, we don't need the billionaire part. That part, we, <laughs> that part we know. It's not like... Yeah, he didn't, do, he didn't raise the funds on Kickstarter. A postal carrier from Australia has decided <laughs> to build a full-scale... <laughs> right. That's yeah. kind of cool. I mean, it's got it's it's kind of weird, you know, stigma. Yeah, it's a little. Hey, uh, I'm gonna build a dirigible called the Hindenburg. Who yeah. wants to go for a ride? You need, smoke, smoke. Anyone want to smoke? Right. Yeah. Would you go? See, I forget if we talked. See, my about this feeling before. is is this boat has got sinking out of its system. Oh yeah. What are the chances? You know what I mean? Like Elliot. <laughs> you know when you don't want to get hit by lightning. Sure. Yeah, use the microphone there. Yes. You know when you don't want to get hit by lightning? Yes. Yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> you go stand by the tree that just got hit by lightning, right? No. Oh, that's not it? You go inside? Yeah. You put your golf clubs down and go inside? Right. Oh, okay. All right. But if there wasn't a caddy shack to go hide in, you'd go stand by the tree that got mm-hmm. hit by lightning because it's not going to hit there again. You know what I'm saying? I this do. boat is already right. sunk. It's true. They should build a Lusitania, and they should build a Bismarck. They should build all the great ships that have sunk, because what a chance of them sinking again. You're right. They should re- revive and repurpose all the tragedies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But think about who would be the people aboard this boat with you. Mm. It's a lot of douchebags. That's what I'm thinking. I- I'm guessing. And then... Uh, and, and, but it would be you'd dress in the period garb and do all this stuff, and then there'd always be some asshole. Maybe it's like a floating Renaissance fair. Yeah, and there'd be one guy that fucked it all up because he was wearing the cargo shorts and flip flops <laughs> yeah. and didn't get down with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't like that guy. But see, are, do you have any, have you been on a cruise? Yeah, I did. I went, I went on a 
me and Jimmy and our girlfriends and wives, I took them both, went on a tour, went on a really bad like princess thing to like some crappy part of Mexico for like four days and we were miserable the entire time. Why? Because I've never been on a cruise, but I imagine it would be miserable. They force you to eat dinner. It's like a giant floating Benny Hannes. You have to <laughs> eat dinner at a table with a whole bunch of strangers. And I like going out to dinner with like friends, especially like Jimmy, because he's such a great guy and a great talker and everything. You want to just sit in that booth. Instead, you're at a table with like 16 people. And I remember having this thing where the first thing I said on the first night was I had some salad or something. And I said, oh, can I have some balsamic vinegar? And they said, oh, we don't have any of that. And it was this weird feeling of being a adrift at sea with no balsamic vinegar. <laughs> These are white people problems. But I was like, N you mean I'm not gonna see balsamic vinegar until I see land in four days? Like, it's felt, well, yeah, felt very Who harrowing to me. Who sets sail without balsamic? You don't set sail. I don't care if you're just going after big mouth, b mouth bass for like an hour and a half. You bring some balsamic. I, would, I don't known. even go swimming without it. You know, <laughs> I don't. I don't get a cuticle push and do the foot dip without some balsamic, okay? And I do a lot of cuticle pushes and foot dips. So, no, but this maniac captain <laughs> set sail. Yeah, he was like Bogart in that movie. Remember, Elliot? The African Queen? No, the, uh, oh, the, the other Kane one. The Cane Mutiny. The Cane Mutiny, that's right. That was like Played this, by his own rules. He was crazy captain, <laughs> like the Cane Mutiny captain, yeah. and he set sail with no, uh, with, with, with no balsamic vinegar, <laughs> and there was this uh, other uncomfortable thing where um, Jimmy's ex-wife used to do this thing where she would guess people's profession except for it was insulting. <laughs> like, she'd go, hold on, hold on, because we're just sitting at a table and like, like, let me guess what you do. You work at a rendering plant. <laughs> no? Actually, Something about no. slaughtering animals? Not at all, no. no so you, don't, you don't work with bacon at all? No, I, no. no. The guy would be like, no, I'm an attorney. And she's like, oh, man. And then it was like, but it's weird when you're guessing what people do. It's kind of like... An attorney for a rendering plant? <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a, she, she, she guessed that a guy was a butcher. Would but she only ever guess vaguely insulting things? It felt that way to me at the table, <laughs> yes. It was between that and the lack of balsamic vinegar. It was a complete disaster, you see? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, speaking of Jimmy Kimmel, Morrissey was supposed to go on Kimmel's show, but canceled his appearance at the last minute because he's vegan and the guys from Duck Dynasty were going to yes. be on the same show. Ah. Uh. And um, so Kimmel explained it. He said that Morrissey is a vegan and a staunch animal rights activist. Morrissey stated that he could not, quote, morally be on a television program where the cast members of Duck Dynasty will also be guests. As far as my rep... Uh, Morrissey but what's the goddamn difference if they were the guests the day before or the day after? The yeah, Duck Dynasty true. guys, number one. Number two, when do these re reality show assholes become television stars? <laughs> and also, I told you, didn't I tell you Morrissey was a weirdo? Yeah. I told you, I sat down with his tour manager, and I was like, uh, he was like, I'm Morrissey's tour manager. I'm like, that guy's a weirdo, right? Uh, absolutely not. He's a normal guy. I'm like, well, he was lying. Isn't he? No, he is normal, and he's like, yeah, he's totally, I mean, you know, one time we went to play a theater, and there was a piece of jerky on the ground, and uh, he beat off on it and punched someone. But <laughs> at, other than that, and then I found out, Mike August, where do we do a show where uh, his name was misspelled on the marquee and he just said, keep driving, which I kind of yeah. like that. I kind of like that part. But uh, Detroit. Detroit, we're playing a theater in Detroit a couple of, it's just like a month ago. Royal Oak. Royal Oak. And the guy was like, uh, I said, how was Morrissey? And he went, well, I wouldn't know. And I said, what happened? He said, his bus pulled into town. He looked up and saw his name misspelled on the, now to be, just, to be fair, it said douchebag on there, you know. <laughs> live tonight, tickets still available. Yeah. <laughs> no, it misspelled Morrissey somehow, and he just said, keep, keep driving. You, you should try that. I you, should do you'd that. You'd never work. <laughs> I, I know, my name is misspelled uh, everywhere. But yeah, so anyway, you, you know that thing where you tell somebody, 
hey, this person sounds like a pain in the ass. And they go, no, 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 no. And then they tell you five stories about how nutty they are. Right. Then it's Morrissey. Yeah. So uh, Morrissey said, <clears throat> this is Kimmel saying Big what Morrissey said. Big douche strikes again. <laughs> as far Thank as you. my reputation is concerned, I can't take the risk of being on a show alongside people who, in effect, amount to animal serial killers. Then Kimmel said that Morrissey had given him an ultimatum saying that he had to choose between Morrissey and the Duck Dynasty guys, and then this is what Kimmel said. While I respect his stance on this, I really do, there's a very good reason why I didn't dump the Duck Dynasty guys for Morrissey. It's because they have guns and Morrissey doesn't. Why, I, this notion of there's some crazy hillbilly family that hunts alligators or goes after possum or shoots ducks, and we gotta put them all on TV is absolutely insane, but it's diabolical. It's keeping normal people people off TV. Well, I know, because every time I, my agent talks to someone about going on TV or me going on TV, it's always like, uh, we pay those guys from Hog Slaughter, we pay those guys $4 a show, and we give them a bag of Funyuns, and they're getting a 19 share right now in the demographic. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? They don't physically pay anyone. Elliot, remember they used to pay you to be on TV? They still do. Oh, they do? Well, they pay you, but as long as you're not competing with the Duck oh, Dynasty guys. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. So they essentially figured out a way to get... It's basically, it's what's, yeah. it's, it's what's happened to porn. The, even the majesty of porn. Well, I mean, you used to have to pay porn stars. You'd have to get them under contract and pay them. And now it's like, hey, that chick's really coked up. Let's just film her screwing, and then we'll throw it on, you know, throw it on the internet. And it'll do it for free. So for Wait you, a it's a, I got a it's great a, business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. Are there some people who prefer that? I mean, for you, it sounds as if the artistry and the majesty is lost. But well, I'm wondering, are there some people who like the direction? Wh when I watch porn, I'm usually in the mood to be swept away. <laughs> right. You know like, what I'm saying? Like good merchant ivory mm -hmm. porn. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the period stuff that yeah. we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. All right. There's, you, there is more to the Morrissey story. There is more. Yeah, Go. so then Morrissey issued a statement. Um, it's long, <laughs> so I'll just read part of it. I was disappointed with last night's Jimmy Kimmel show, wherein our smiling host managed to ridicule depression. He then found time to ridicule healthy eating, and he also ridiculed the notion that animals should be entitled to the possession of their own lives. Furthermore, he found time to jokingly promote gun ownership, hugely amus amusing for the parents at Sandy Hook, no doubt. He also promoted his well, special... Well, look, Jimmy didn't cause that. He's partially responsible, but he did not fully cause that tragedy. I agree with Morrissey. That's obviously as... He'll have to answer to his maker one day about that tragedy, but it's not all Jimmy's fault right. that tragedy Just, happened. None of the yeah. above issues are, of course, as important as Jimmy Kimmel himself, who has right. finally Hold revealed on. his Morrissey's show. Morrissey's a full-blown douchebag yeah. at this point. The, the thing where you evoke that Sandy Hook bullshit and you weave it into every single fucking conversation is... Uh, he's just a full-blown... He's, he, the, yeah. the, the, he's a fucking narcissistic douchebag, and I knew he was when I spoke to his tour manager. Do you think he's also, though... And you will relate to this, I imagine. The kind of guy who's hoping to always not have to do something. And yes. so when an opportunity presents itself, he can use that. Yes, I'm always secretly hoping not to do things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Elliot? I hear you. Do you know what I'm talking about? I said I heard you. Okay, all right. <laughs> I get you. No, I know. And I was uh, going to do a Jenny Jones show or whatever, and I had a first-class ticket, and they gave me a coach ticket. I just turned around and went home. Yeah. Yeah, it was my... Morrissey-esque. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a vestige of, like, an old mentality. It starts with being a horrible student, and then it, and then it, and then it dovetails nicely into being a horrible employee, which is to say, when I was a kid... I was a horrible student, so you would hope for a substitute, or you'd hope that, like, in 1972, the earthquake hit the valley, and it was like, well, the school's closed for the day. And it's like, thank Christ. If only we could get an earthquake every day so I wouldn't learn anything. It would be awesome. And then when I was working construction, it'd be raining, and the whole job site would just be a big mud pit, and you'd show up, and they'd go, no work today. It's all, all rained out. And they wouldn't pay you. I'd just turn around and go home, happy not to make any money. So I, I understand where, where, where Morrissey's coming from, even if he's a colossal douchebag. 
And he's doing a concert at the Staples Center in March. And initially, the news was that the Staples Center and surrounding area vendors, it was going to be all strict vegetarian. Oh. But... Wait till he gets hold of those Mexicans with the hot dogs wrapped with bacon. You can't, you cannot legislate those people. You can't keep them away. And that smell permeates the air oh, all yeah. around it, too. You can't, and by the way, they don't, they don't play by your rules. They play by their own bacon-based rules. That's like so you those telling, are lawless hot like you dogs. telling ants to skedaddle. They don't listen. They're there. You ain't getting rid of them. Well, but then it came out that that, like, his representative like doesn't know where that initial report came from because that's not true. But the Staples Center will be offering more meat-free alternatives. But, but how, meat will still be offered. How torn would Morrissey be? Because on one hand, you got the guy, he's taking the hot dog, which could be several kinds of meat, as well as other parts, parts unknown. Mm -hmm. He's wrapped it He's so in love with meat, he's wrapped it with a second meat known as bacon, and he's cooking it on a modified shopping cart with a propane tank on it out front of the Staples Center. Wait, do we have a picture of that? Oh, a picture of Morrissey. All right, there he is with his cat that he's about to eat. So now, <laughs> Morrissey goes out there, and he has that one hand, he has these people that are, you know, basically meat is murder, and he's serving up the, this uh, animal hostilities. On the other hand, these are hardworking migrant folks who come to this country right. with nothing more than a dream. He's going to be torn on his sort of liberal agenda here, right? Does he tear him a new asshole? You can't do that. Mm -mm. I mean, Jimmy's the man. You know what I mean? You can say whatever you want about him. What's he going to do with the proud Hispanic pushing the car with the propane tank? <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a self-satisfied sniff, Elliot. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me that the animal thing, that's his number one blowhardy agenda point. Yeah, but I don't think he would go after that. Right. That's, what I, that, that's, yeah. that's, my, that's my take. All right, so he's nuts. But listen, we still like the Smiths, right? Yeah. All right. Is there a guy out here with the last name Smith who's never heard of the band The Smiths? Because that would really put a capper on the evening. <laughs> Nothing? Not at all? All right. Let's do one more story. What do we got here? Tw okay. According to a study, 25% of men regularly dream about their exes. Oh. Any dreams about Babs? <laughs> no? He's shaking his head no if you're listening at home. Yes. No? Anyone ever confuse you with Richard Simmons? <laughs> that wasn't very nice. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. All right, you're right. That was right. You look better in shorts. Do you, right. do you dream about your exes? I've had dreams about exes before. I, I don't... But how can you... First off, I've had dreams about cars and roommates and apartments and things I haven't even fucked. <laughs> your cars or well barely i mean or not on a regular basis they're not both exhaust pipes i'd usually pick a favorite you know what i mean but what i'm saying is is how are you not going to have dreams about things you've had sex with in the past good or bad you know what i mean yeah like i mean let's let's put it to you this way uh elliot ever been raped in prison <laughs> no well the, the night is young but i'm saying this if you were raped in prison, you'd be dreaming about that, would you not? Mm -hmm. It'd yes. be called a nightmare, but you'd be dreaming about it. Right, right. Well, if you had beautiful consensual sex oh. out of prison, why not think about that on occasion? Well, yeah, or, I mean, or you could have had shitty sex that was consensual and wasn't in prison with an ex, and you might dream about that. I only have prison sex, <laughs> if, that's, if that's what you mean. But I will dream about it. Is it, it hard to get into the prison? Hmm? Is it hard to get into the prison to have the sex? Not the prison of my mind, man. <laughs> Not when I'm ramming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Adam and I talked recently about the fact that at, um, at this age, we don't even have like, crazy dreams that much anymore. No, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with the symbolic dreams. Like, people go, well, you know, that stands for that job you're thinking about taking, and then that, uh, that, that uh, gnome 
that's uh, dressed as one of the uh, seven dwarves. That stands for your indecision. That it gets in between you and your new career. It's all it's all done now. Elliot, do you have those? Do you have symbolic dreams anymore? Always. Always. Can you remember your last one? Isn't this it? This. <laughs> what does it symbolize? You were dreamed you're trapped in a restaurant with a guy with a nasally drone who wouldn't stop asking you stupid questions. Oh, he raised an eyebrow. It was a knowing <laughs> raise, too. All right, one more before we bring it home. All right. Well, Elliot, how's that Mangria treating you? I feel like you have another hit off that. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 you're good? You were driven here tonight. Cut loose a little bit. All right. All right. Okay, so. Uh, Out or in the shell? Where are we now? Not in the shell. Not in the shell. Did you okay. spit up Elliot's drink? Well, he ain't drinking it. <laughs> hey, hold on a second. There's a lot of kids out there and a lot of African kids who go to bed sober every night, okay? And so we're just supposed to dump our booze down the drain and have those little Biafran kids go to bed totally sober with no buzz at all? I don't feel good about that. Morrissey's not a fan of that. There's kids out there who aren't buzzed, okay? So I'm just gonna dump this in the toilet. Think about, you know, before you talk, Brian, you should think. <laughs> you give me a lot to think about. Uh -huh. you, you really are a humanitarian. Well, yeah, I care about the kids, if that's what you're talking about. So a 32-year-old Brooklyn man is suing his parents. He filed a self-written lawsuit uh, accusing them of physical and emotional abuse, which led to him feeling unloved and beaten by the world. And so he's suing them for $200,000 for not loving him enough. If I thought my dad had $10, I would sue his ass, but... <laughs> He's asking for more than $200,000 in damages, and he wants his parents to mortgage their family home and purchase two franchises like Domino's Pizza. <laughs> but by the way, they have no money. Oh, they don't have money? No. No. Oh. So he's just, but he feels that they owe him. He says, mm -hmm. if you have kids, you're expected to, this is the part that actually made me be like, oh, if you have kids, you're expected to love your children. You want the best for your children. Uh, I feel like my parents should want the best for their children and grandchildren, so we have something to pass down for generations so we don't have to live like this. All right. Well, maybe he's making a point for a bigger point for the rest of the country. You know what I mean? He's bringing this into the, uh, a, a dialogue up where you, you yes. should love. We, we should all be symbolically sued by our kids. You know, not, not in the court of law, but, you know, if you're a crappy parent. Elliot, I'm guessing you're a good parent, right? I try. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you burn a lot of calories on those kids and money as well, right? Yeah. I would have been happy if you were my dad. I feel like we could have got along pretty good. Your dad looked nice to me. Yeah, it was he sweet. Plays the trumpet. Right? Plays the trumpet. Well, yeah, he does. But he also carries it around, you know, just to get laid. Right. You know, it's one of those things. It's an affectation, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's one of those things. But yeah, I could see me and you just kind of hanging out Sunday. What's, what's your team, Elliot? Oh. You used the microphone good there. No. My team? Yeah, you have. I mean, football, basketball, yeah, yeah. baseball. Yeah, your sport. Yeah, what do you like? I like all the sports. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't, uh, f I follow everyone, but I don't like one team at this stage. No. Better yeah, than no. another no, team. No, 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 I wasn't expecting a specific answer. <laughs> I was saying like a general, you know, I'd see us sitting around watching teams, <laughs> rooting teams on in sports. Watching the game and watching the, the players. The games, yeah. kind of rooting for both teams to win. Do you, do you think I got money on both those teams. Do you, do you, do you gamble on that? I, I could gamble on, like I said, both teams and then just sports, you know, just us <laughs> watching sports, looking at a peachy folder, admiring the athleticism and the general sports yeah. that were displayed there. You know, that kind of thing. Hanging out. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Okay. All right. Might you guys throw a ball around? Well, can we go have a toss out in the backyard? Sure. We could play baseball. Uh, well, we can have a catch. Oh, have a catch. Me and Elliot Gould having a catch. I'd insist you grow the crazy cop mustache back. No, no, that, uh, we were doing mash at that point. I know, Elliot. but it'd still be cool, right? So we want to wait till I grow it back? Yeah, well, I'm, no, I don't want to wait that long. I really, I, I don't want to chance that. But I, I would, as, I would, as we're having a catch, I'd, I'd ask you to just to let it go. You know what I mean? You know, and, and listen... You know, uh, Tom Selleck had a Magnum P.I. mustache, you know. 
And he kept, I know, you're not a fan, but he kept it going, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, they canceled the show, but the mustache wasn't canceled. That didn't go into syndication. And I'm saying you could have done the same thing with that handlebar you had going for MASH, you know? Okay, no. I'd, I'd be remiss not if I didn't. Not a Tom Selleck fan? I, I respect him. I worked with him on Friends. Oh, you did? He oh, that's his right. his daughter's boyfriend on that's Friends. Right. Monica's boyfriend. That's right. Or right. Something. Yeah, and now he's on Blue Bloods, and all new Blue Bloods. <laughs> what happens when I'm so this tired is... of all those repeat Blue Bloods. Hey, I've seen partially new Blue Bloods and ones that were cobbled together from other previously yeah. run Blue Bloods, but this yeah. is an all new Blue Blood. He darkens uh, his mustache. He darkens his mustache. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel, see, Take that, best looking man in the Adam world. Adam and I are both pretty big Friends fans. I, hope, I mean, you're open yeah. about this. Uh-huh. What was it like working on Friends? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the news. I'm Allison Rosen. Zip it, Gould. That was the news with Allison Rosen. Tell all book about your experience on Friends. I smell that one coming from HarperCollins. <laughs> all right, uh, me and Drew going to be uh, together again. You know Dr. Drew, Elliot? Uh, not really. Dancing with the Stars, season three? I'm BSing uh, you. He never did it. Oh, no? No, oh. he has a little something I just dignity. noticed that you have a, an evening with Dennis Prager. I do have an e- evening with Dennis Prager. That sounds funny. Now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pair you two up. You guys would bring the mirth. You know Dennis Prager? You like Dennis Prager? We've met. I can't say that I know him, though. Okay. But are you a fan of his? Uh, I, again, I, I think I respect him, but I can't say that I'm a fan of his. I, I will tell him that his head will explode. Oh, really? I'll, like, Dennis, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to get too big-headed before we walk out on stage, but the great Elliot Gould says he thinks he respects you. <laughs> and, but he doesn't know you. <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to jump out of that huge skin of his. Because he's I, a I lot of I don't think so. I don't he's a very wise man. I'm sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I got a lot of range. Because uh, I'll go out with, uh, I'll go to Denver at the Paramount Theater with uh, Dr. Drew uh, this Saturday. And then uh, me and Dennis Prager, the uh, CSUN, by the way, on the, uh, the Saturday after that. Or two Saturdays after that. That is 3 six, team. All right, uh, what are we uh, missing out on? Ah, yes, Elliot Gould. You, my friend, are getting a plug. Where is that uh, piece of paper? Oh, oh, it's behind me? Oh, it's in front of me. Ah, the movie, that's right. Dwarfman, In Love, romantic comedy. It is uh, coming to theaters and direct TV cinema March 22nd. And uh, again, I have not seen a screening or a trailer, but it feels to me like a young woman uprooted from the San Fernando Valley in a whirlwind of, uh, <clears throat> into the whirlwind of downtown L.A. Would that be right? Correct. Thank you, Elliot Gould. Website, DorfmanInLove.com. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Elliot Gould, Bald Brian, and Allison Rosen saying mahalo. <laughs> Hey, kiddies, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and catch any podcasts you might have missed at youtube.com slash Adam Carolla. That's youtube.com slash me.